Hello, hello. We are back for Art Quilt Thursday. And I am so glad to see you guys. Sorry I had to take off last week, but I'm trying to figure out this Medicare stuff. And it's a little overwhelming, to say the least. But it is so good. Hi, Miss Betty. Hello, Miss Marsha. Delara Stegan, nice to see you, sweetie. It was a lovely day here today. It was like 63, so we opened the windows for a bit. So, hello. Hello, Laura. It is so good to see you. So, let me get my lights on. I promised y'all tonight that we're going to play around with the confetti. And I'm not ready to put it on my quilt yet. So, I'll, I've got an additional fabric that I'm going to put it on. Kathleen Ziegler is here. This is great to see you. Okay, so I have to say I'm sorry I haven't worked on the quilt this week because I took a class from Mid Atlantic, the Mid Atlantic Quilt Show that was done virtually online, and I ended up loving the class. I learned so much, and I am looking forward to my next one. So it is good to see our Kathleen Ziegler. All right. And Linda's here. Everybody is here. It's so good. So now let me show you what I was working on from my Mid-Atlantic class. This is my first collage animal. And, you know, I'm glad Betty's here because Betty gave me Betty and Deborah Donnell gave me some wonderful tips and um, pictures of ones they had done that gave me encouragement. And thank you so much. So here we go. And this is a cow. And here she is. So I'm working on her. And... What you see now probably won't be what it ends up being over time. Because what you end up doing is you work on a little bit and then you look and you think and you work a little bit and you edit it a lot. So she, I followed her instructions, which I'm very glad I did. My teacher was Jane Hayworth. Haywood. Hayworth, and she's actually going to be teaching again in the next Mid-Atlantic Quilt Virtual Quilt Show, which just opened up registration today, And um, but I'm taking a thread painting class. I've been wanting to take a thread painting class, so this time I'm going to take the thread painting. Because you know what? I learned so much by doing this. I'm glad I didn't try to just do it by myself, because... She gave me so much information so that I could make better choices. So, I'm, I started out, I'll show you some pictures later tonight. But I started out, I couldn't figure out what color. First, I was thinking all the colors. And then I read her information that said, pick a color scheme. Because this is a mistake I often make. And she was right. I like to throw everything in and the kitchen sink into something. And by picking a color scheme, I was more able to keep it from getting muddy. Okay. So, and it's not. I, I, that's one of the things I do check on. She gave me, so this is a complimentary color scheme. And in fact, in some ways, it is a split com complementary because in some of the fabrics, I started to go to orange and then from the purple, I started to go to blue. So it's, it's, it's mostly a complementary, but you remember complementary colors are opposites on the color wheel. The most famous complementary color scheme is Christmas, red and green. And then there's blue and orange, purple and yellow. Is there anything blue and orange, purple, yellow, red and green? 
So I think that if I missed one, you guys let me know. But anyway, here he is. She gave me great hints as um, by saying sometimes it needs a little contrast. So I was wondering, how would you put black contrast under all these little pieces? Well, when you're cutting out a shape, I'll give you an example. This shape right here, the lavender shape. She said, put a dark piece of fabric right behind it and cut it. When you're cutting, cutting it a little bit bigger than the original piece. And that makes it so much easier. Because I was thinking, do you put black on the back and then work around it? But, like, I came in and added a lighter yellow. One thing I needed to do was I took, I did this upstairs. Because it gets cold down here on cold days. But I took all my fabric upstairs and I had to come back down and get blender fabrics or bridge, bridge fabrics is what I mean to say. A bridge fabric helps you get from yellow to purple. Because when I started the ear at first, I just had yellow and purple. And it didn't work. It was too big of a contrast. So what I did is I came up and got fabrics that would bridge the gap. Okay, so purples that had yellow, yellows that had purple, and then I became, she gave me that hint, and I became much happier. So anyway, but he's coming, or she's coming along, and another hint, I couldn't figure out what color scheme to use her with. So you know what I did? My, I have a daughter who's an ag major and has a farm and works for the state of Maryland in soil conservation. And she, she has sheep, she's had pigs, she's geese, chickens, rabbits, you name it. And one thing she hasn't had is a cow. And I decided I was going to make this in her honor. And that really helped me because then I was like, what color do I want to make it for Katie? Bam. It was so easy to come up with the, with the decision after that. So if you ever are having a hard time for something like a class, consider, who would I make this quilt for? And that will help you get started with your color choices. So I have been working on this. I'm addicted to it now. And I've got to tell you, my back gets sore <laughs> just sitting and leaning over this. So I'm trying to work on exercises. But I have to say, it's a lot of fun. And it's a great, oh, thank you, Miss Jody. It's great for small scraps and little bits of stuff. And so it would be very easy for anyone to do. And when I only had the ear done, I hadn't told them what animal I was making. And Katie said, that's a cow. <laughs> and she was right. And you notice I used a K on the ear tag for my Katie. So she would know it's hers. Once this is all done, then I'm going to carefully cut it off of the interfacing that I built it on. See, I've got the pattern underneath, then a see-through interfacing, but I'll cut it out, cut it from all of that, and then I will take a background fabric, and I'm going to make a, a kind of, um, I haven't decided for sure. I'm thinking about doing a rolling grass and a blue sky and maybe a little bit of like a sunlight um, for the background, but I'm going to keep the background minimal, minimal, because I want Bessie here to be the star of the show. So I will let you know. Hopefully I'll have it done by next Thursday night. I had a lot of fun. So if you would like to take her class, she even gave us a trunk show. Her work is exquisite. She's originally from England. And she lives in California right now. But now, I am so happy I took that class. If you have a little money to spare and want to take a class, they've opened up the Greenville Mancuso Quilt Show. It's going to be virtual again. And in fact, Miss Jody, I sent you an email today because the new deadline for the quilt competition is April 6th. So I'm thinking this month I'm going to be busy on a tiger 
And I think that Miss Jody has to enter. Alberta, you're here. Hello, Southern Marylander. And there's Cheryl. Wonderful to see you, Mike Cheryl, the sunshine Cheryl. So anyway, um, but if you have a little money set aside and you would like to take a quilt class, Mancuso opened it up today. And let me tell you, I had wanted to take a thread painting class last time and I kind of hemmed and hawed on, oh, am I going to spend the money? Well, you know what? If this wasn't a pandemic year, I would be going to a couple of these shows and I would spend a whole lot of money staying in a hotel and food and travel. So I said, I can afford to take one class for uh, the last show and this coming up show and a lecture because um, Brubaker's, Brubaker Knapp, what is her, is it Kathy? Susan, Brubaker Knapp. She's giving a lecture and she's a, um, a North Carolina gal and does the Quilting Arts TV show. So I said, I want to see her lecture. So anyway, I signed up today. I didn't wait because I said, if you see a class you want, jump on it. And it's really neat. The class I'm going to take, I'm, I don't remember the teacher's name. You'll have to look it up. I sat there for a couple of hours and went teacher by teacher and looked at every class, everything. So I would know what I wanted. And she is really teaching intricate um, I mean, the real leaves on the bushes and the trees. And I said, oh, I want to take that. So, and she, she teaches you what kind of tree shapes so that when you do the thread painting, you can easily look and go, oh, that's a palm tree or that's a pine and all of that. So you watch, yes, Marcia, she's on the PBS um, uh, Quilting Arts. So that's exactly so anyway, let me see. I was hoping I don't ha have it up yet. Let me see. I was going to try to tell you the teacher I'm taking. But let me see. Um, 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 um. Oh, boy, it doesn't have the teacher's name here. But I will definitely tell you next week. But there are. A lot of good teachers and a lot of great classes, all kinds of classes. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm a little tired, honestly. I haven't been sleeping good lately, so I don't know what that's about. But my daughter got, who's the teacher, got her vaccination yesterday, and I can't wait. I'm hoping March 24th, cross your fingers. And the sooner that we can all get vaccinated, the sooner maybe we can be protected because with all these variants cropping up, you need to get vaccinated. You need to have a good basis to protect yourself, okay? So as soon as you can, you get that vaccination and we'll celebrate together. Looking a little pale. Yeah, I am. I'm a little tired. So, but uh, I, oh, I know one of the reasons I did something I've never done before. Mark had been going grocery shopping at 6.30 in the morning um, every two weeks or so. And we needed some things from Walmart, but I was really worried about him going inside a Walmart. And um, so I ordered it online and did a pickup. And I actually went to do the pickup. I got to tell you this, okay? I... Um, went to the wrong Walmart <laughs> on one side of town and the guy came out and said, can I help you? And I said, I'm waiting for my pickup. He said, Oh, you want the store on the other side of town. So luckily I was able, I had already checked in. They said, let's know when you're on your way. We check you in. And luckily I was able to figure out shortcuts and get there in 15 minutes. But it was so nice. I put in a big order because that's where we get our paper products, our toothpaste, all of that. You know, that we stock up on, on good basics like that. And it had been months since we've been to a Walmart. So anyway, it was a big order. And I mean, once I let them know I was here, wasn't even 10 minutes, boom, they were out. She was loading it in the back. 
And that's the reason I'm tired, because I had to get up at 6.30. And that, I don't know why people get up at 6.30. That's when I turn over and get really comfortable and sleep for four more hours. So <laughs> anyway, it messes you up, you know, because I couldn't fall asleep till almost two and then was up at 6.30 and then driving around town trying to figure out what Walmart I but I wanted to say, if you've never tried the the, the um, pickup, it went beautifully. I was really happy. So, anyway, so any, this is my club. Here it is. Jane Hayworth is the teacher I had. And she will be teaching again at the Myrtle Beach quilt, uh, quilt show that's going to be virtual. And it's going to be the end of April. They just opened registration today. And I didn't realize this, but they only take 20-some people per class. So if you see a class you want, get in there and, and hold it. Because last time, like I told you, it worked out beautifully that I said, you know, I'd like to do that one then. And because I, I realized, oops, I put it in my cart, but I didn't pay for it. And boop, it got filled up. So anyway, this was a wonderful teacher. She's teaching. I think she's doing sunflowers for that next show. I forgot. She's, I think she's teaching two classes, and she's lovely. She was a wonderful teacher. So, and I did it on, I did it on Zoom, and it went really well. So, it was very nice. Okay. Oh, and come Sunday, I'm going to give you all a few little hints in class, hints and tips for how to be a good student when you take a uh, quilt class. So I will do that on Sunday. All right, let's get over here to this quilt. And don't let me forget, I need to show you photos this time because you've been sending me a few good photos. And I want to show them. And one of, our, one of our ladies said, you know, it would really help if people would send in their quilt so I can see what they're doing. So make sure that you... If you're working on this landscape, send me a photo by email to our quilt, our time to quilt.com. And if you send me a picture, I'll show it during our show and give other people some in, in, in incentive and um, encouragement. So, all right, let's go play with confetti. Betty. All right. Here's what I've done. Okay. I cut up a bunch of confetti. And whoops. This piece didn't cut get cut up as good. And up you can do it several different ways. I ended up doing most of them just by cutting fabrics and strips and then cutting them into tiny pieces okay but you also can take whoops i didn't have it well there we go here's the confetti you can cut up strip thin strips and then cut crosswise or uh oh hold on i don't know why this came up there we go or you can put it on a cutting mat and use your rotary cutter and chop it up so here's my confetti, and I'm going to show you two ways so that whichever way you, you know, if you don't have fuse-it powder, which is very convenient, if you don't have fuse-it powder, now I got this from Amazon, um, this is two ounce, but this was like $10, you know, fusing powder, bonding powder can be expensive. So, and especially everything you buy at a quilt shop can be even more expensive. But there are some really good powders out there. And thank goodness we've got them providing for us. All right. So what I did is I took a sheet of steam seam 2. If you don't have the fusible powder, then it might help you to have some steam seam on hand. And, oops. Let me, I forgot I had one more way to teach you. I'll be right back when we find some. 
Um, 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 um. Okay, here, good, 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 good. Now, this is not the color I would normally use, but I wanted to get some very fine tool netting because I forgot there's three ways that you can do, three ways that you can do confetti. Now, one way is you take your steam -a seam you place it on your, whoops, no, you have to tear off one side of the paper first. Hold on. Okay. So you tear off the paper. So here is the fusible, and then there's another sheet of paper. I like steam machine too because it's, it's sticky after you put it on the fabric. So then I'm going to put a pressing sheet down here and take the iron and iron it on. And make sure you don't iron it on top of your cutting mat, only on the ironing surface. And then I'm going to get, I have another piece of steam -a seam already down. So that's what happened is the heat from the iron wanted to pull that up. But let me pull this over here. Okay. So now once I have the steam seam, the one side ironed down, I take the last piece of paper off. Okay, like that. So now all of this is sticky. See, it's very sticky. So you take, and be careful, don't sneeze when you're touching, when you're holding this. But what you do is you take your confetti, and you sprinkle it down over the steamer seam, steamer seam too. And the good thing is you can kind of smooth it all out to make sure that you've got it, the background covered. Okay. So this is a way, because most people have something like a steamer seam at home. This is a way that you wouldn't have to go out and buy a new product. Because I, I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm on a budget. So sometimes it's not a good time for me to buy a new product. Okay. All righty. Let's see. I want to make sure I cover it up because I don't want to put the iron on it and have any areas that will even stick to the ironing paper. This is something where you, if you do this, you must have whether it is a piece of parchment paper or whether it's the paper backing from a steam seam or it's one of the Teflon or silicone pressing cloths. But you have to have, this is off of a type of, um, not steam seam, but one of the other products I had used. So you take and put this on the top. And then you come in with your iron, and you iron it. Okay. Make sure it's kind of cool. So let it cool so that when you lift it off, it won't take your confetti with it. Pull it off at an angle. And there you go. Now you have nice confetti that is fully adhe adhered. So now we're going to go over and we're going to try some of this fusible powder. This is called Bow Nash Fuse It Powder. It's a lot cheaper than some of the other brands, but if, if you're not on a tight budget, Get what, what you can find and what you can afford. So, and don't use too much. You'd be surprised. You don't need that much. Now, what I'm going to do is just shake this on. Put a little bit down first. Then I'm going to put my confetti on. And then, and I can feel the, the fusible powder, so I'm pushing it back up into place. Push it all back up. 
Then I'm going to take a touch more powder because I want to make sure I've got enough. I can't even see it. I can feel it, but I can't see it. So, and then make sure the powder is up. Make sure it's the fusible powder is right where you want it because wherever the iron hits it, that's where it melts. Okay. Now take my pressing sheet, put it down, and give it a good press. Oops. Okay, I might look. Oh, some of it mel melted on this. Okay, hold on a second. Let me try this again. Let me put it. I think I didn't add enough of the. Or maybe I didn't leave it. The iron, the heat on there long enough. So put it back. Some of it stuck, but some of it didn't. Okay, let's try this again. It always helps to read the directions and see how long they want you to leave it sitting like that. Just iron and done. Okay. I think that might have done it. I'm letting it cool just a touch. There we go. This time, I think, yeah, look, it stuck good this time. Now, when I have used this fusible powder before, and this is like a fusible powder that you can get to do repairs on clothing or furniture, applique, mending, whatever. And in fact, let me close it. I don't want this spewing out. Okay. So now I've done the confetti, but I wouldn't be done with each of these yet. I would then take some invisible thread and I would either do a zigzag or a lot of stitching over top to make sure this is really... Oh, Susie, you tested positive for COVID. Oh, sweetheart. Oh, man, I hope you can soon get a vaccination, darling. I'm so sorry. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you, because if you don't have steam a seam and you don't have steam a seam and you don't have the fusible powder, there's another thing you can do, and that would be to iron this down, to just have it hold on for a second, just to get it so it's flat. Then I would come along, I would use in a case like, and this will come off, this is just iron there, but the heat of the iron just kind of helps it behave better. Yes, yeah, Susie, you're going to have to let us know how you're doing, sweetheart. Now, what we're going to do for this is you would take some netting. Now, since it's a white background, using this white actually works pretty nice. But if it were a colored background, then I probably would have used some of my gray tool or netting. And I, I really recommend tool. Netting can be a little coarse can be a little too bulky. And what you're trying to do is have something that doesn't really show, but holds your confetti in place. See how you can't really see that unless you get really close. Let me see if I can bring you in. So if you get in really close, then you can kind of see the netting. But from a distance, you can't tell. So 
Now, and what you do is I would put pins out here, put little straight pins out here, and then I would come and stitch around the edge first to hold it in, and then go around and do some stitching. And if you don't have invisible thread, you know I've told you about you can get it from Superior Threads has the, the best, best invisible thread, but YLI also has good, and I bet you there are a few others. But this is just invisible thread, and if you're using dark colors, they have it in smoky. So, with all of these, I probably would use invisible thread. But let's say you don't have invisible thread, and you really want to do some confetti on your quilt. Then, you know, use a good old gray. And something like this color, look, when you lay it on, it kind of disappears. Okay, let me bring you in closely to show you. But gray is my favorite thread because it can disappear in about any, any circumstance. So if I didn't have the invisible, I would use gray thread. And when, in fact, I do most of my piecing with gray thread or I, and I don't like this color as good, but you can use a creamy, whoops, like a creamy natural, an ivory, but gray thread is, I don't, I think the quilting world would come to a stop if we didn't have gray thread. So anyway, even though these, these are stuck on really well, um, you have to stitch over them just to make sure, because, you know, if this got bumped or picked enough, it could work it loose. So, all right, so that is how you do confetti. And with this one, you'd pin it out here and just gently stitch all around it. And you'll be stitching around each of these, too. So that is how you do confetti. Now, oh, she lost taste and, uh-oh, uh, you're not, no, do not exercise. Oh, my God, thank God they told you that. They have found that when you exercise, you make it worse. So, yes, they were finding, they were curious why athletes we're having so much trouble, so many complications. And then they found out that exercising while they're ill, it makes it worse. So, yes, I'm glad you heard that. Good, good, good job. And, you know, drink plenty of fluids. Take care of yourself as if you had the flu. And just really let your body be a slug and let your body fight this, sweetheart. Yeah, using gray thread is the best. It's the best. So, all right, that's good. Now, oh, so we were talking. Why would you want to use confetti? I mean, it's a lot of work to cut up that little fabric. But think of doing, especially with this, these colors, think of doing a fall quilt and you wanted the trees to have color. It's a great way to capture color. Say you want leaf litter on the ground in your woods to look like, you know, a fall thing. Let's say it was spring and you had some blooming trees or blooming shrubs. Confetti work is a wonderful way to add that color and life and texture. And it's a whole lot easier than trying to cut out a bunch of tiny leaves. Now, Let's say you wanted a bush that had some flowers, but you didn't want the whole thing to look like flowers. Cut up some greens. That would be the leaves on the bush that's blooming. And then put your color in too. So by mixing the green and let's say pink and do different shades, you will get a pretty awesome blooming shrub. So anyway, um. Oh, you hadn't heard that, Laura? Yes, I was reading. I tell you what, losing a kidney kind of makes you a little paranoid. 
I was reading everything I could read on the subject. It's like, ah, and uh, poor Mark and I, if one of us gets a cough or a sniffle, we're like, oh, <laughs> silly us, I tell you. But anyway, all right. So I hope, do you have any questions about doing, doing um, confetti work? And we're going to be doing, the reason I did it on a separate, a piece of muslin is because I'm not ready yet to do it on my quilt. Um, I would not do any confetti work until all of your blocked in color is stitched down with either gray matching thread or preferably the invisible thread. And like I said, I was working on old Bessie to, these last few days, so I didn't get any work done on this. I kept telling myself, get down here today. Get down here and do this. I've just been pokey today. So, okay. All right. It's so funny. Now that I know that I got the all clear at my recheck after all the tests, I feel like I should be full of energy and be gangbusters. But I think the sheer fear that I had been hiding, anxiety and stuff, has left me worn out <laughs> because I feel like I could sleep all the time. All right, so here we go. All right. One thing I wanted to mention is Betty sent me a picture of her landscape. I was really impressed. That she had this kind of a, a maybe it kind of looked a little bit like a, a winter wheat field when it's ready to be harvested. And instead of just putting a flat piece of fabric on, she cut it in pieces and kind of put it. And it gave really good depth and made the land look a little undulating. I wouldn't have thought of that. So see, that's where I learned so much from you guys. That is true. And and I didn't I didn't even tell Mark until after I got back from the doctor. And of course I had to go to the doctor by myself because of COVID. And uh, I told him, yes, and I already had PTSD before I got into this, but I told him I said I was really terrified that sometimes when they operate and take a tumor out, you're worried they'll somehow release some of the cancer cells and it'll spread. I didn't realize how terrified I was until the doctor said, it's all clear. And I, huh? <laughs> Say that one more time. <laughs> and when he told me I had to come back again in three more months, and then I could start doing it every six months, I said, I guess I'll just have to get used to it. And he said, hey, as of right now, you're cancer free. I went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can tell you about tomorrow, but for today, I'll take that. So, it is a scary appointment to go alone to. And I did think about that. I said, if I get bad news, you know. So, but during COVID, when I went to find out what it was, I had to go by myself. And uh, to hear that, well, you know, they're not going to know if they can operate right now to take it out until they see if it's metastasized. And I'm like, you know, I was kind of hoping, okay, there's a tumor. Just take it out. And let's move on. But <laughs> doesn't work like that. So, but thank goodness they did take it out. It was a big tumor, but it's all taken out and all good. All right. So anyway, so a couple of things we'll talk about tonight. So if you came here looking to make great progress on your quilt and to me to have all this stuff going on, I'm letting you down a little bit. Sorry about that. But I will, I promise you, I will work on it this week so we can really get started on a bunch of fun stuff next week. All right. Some of the problems I'm having. My lake doesn't look right. My waterfall is still a little too obvious. And it's not really supposed to be a waterfall. It's supposed to be kind of the water coming down a creek out of the mountain. And then 
it just doesn't look natural enough. Okay, so let me get up here. It doesn't look natural enough. And if it doesn't look natural enough, then you can pretty much guess that you have too much of it showing. I know that might sound odd, but it's true. So what I did before we came on tonight is took my material that looks like little trees and, oh, thank you, sweetheart. And I'm going to come in and kind of place some trees because this was an awkward area right here. So if I come in and place some of these trees, then that takes away some of the awkwardness. Now, it, you don't have to feel like I don't have to go all the way over there. I could come in here. So you see a little peekaboo, okay? And that's one of the things I wanted to tell you guys. That peekaboo is good advice, Linda. Very good advice. Doing peekaboo with the lake. Because rarely do you just go and look at a lake and it's all there. And let me show you. I went back to I went back to my research photos. And so there's this one right here. And see all the grasses in the front hide the edges okay it's not like a beach where you can see the whole edge now this is somebody else's quilt they had done and this is where i'm going to try to help you to make that uh creek or waterfall look a little bit more settled in and here is a natural photo right here now if you notice it's not a perfectly oval you don't see that much of it you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like just a little sliver of it across this way, okay? And because if it's too big, that defies gravity. That would be that would be a lake on a hill, and it can't be, you know, so it has to be a little thinner. And then I noticed the problem with my lake is I need to add some darker fabric in it. This is all too monotone. So I brought in some really pretty blue and then I cut this tree and I'm kind of deciding I think I'll put this hmm I don't know. I think I kind of like it. I'm trying to figure out whether to put it. Oh another thing I wanted to tell you in the animal class, she had us work with tacky glue. And so I said, well, that's her way to teach it. I'm going to try it. But you know how I work with school glue. Now, neither one of these choices are perfect choices. Because with the school glue, sometimes it doesn't stick good enough. But I found that with the tacky glue, that stuff most of the time stuck too well. And I'm always lifting things up and off so that I can try it a different way. So, whoops, I might not have my glue here. I might have taken it upstairs. Anyway, so I was gonna tell you, I am going to, when I do collage quilts, I change my mind so much. I'm gonna keep using the school glue. Now, if you want, if you don't, if you want the glue to be a little thicker so it's easier for it to hold when you put down, then what I would do is leave the lid off the glue for a few minutes <laughs> for maybe overnight or something like that. And I don't know where my glue is. I'm, I apologize. So anyway, um, here it is. I, for once, I put it away. How about that? But school glue is easier to take on and pull off. Um, I think I want this to lay on top. If I want this to lay on top, I can't have a straight line. Remember what I told you, there are no straight lines in nature. Even a horizon, an ocean horizon is not straight. If you can see enough of it, it has the curve of the earth. 
So there are no straight lines. Trees are not straight. I dare you to find a perfectly straight tree. So even a pine tree is not perfectly straight. But anyway, but let's say you wanted this to be thicker. If it's too, you think it's too runny, then by all means, I'm just going to have a little peekaboo part of the lake here. And I'm going to put this down there. So that helps, number one. Then I'm going to come in here and cut a piece of the lake. Ah, darker horizon of water was set to water. That's a great, thank you so much. Let me tell you, I'm so grateful. Um, Miss Linda is quite the artist, and I'm very grateful to get any kind of advice and help that I can get from you. So thank you so much. We all learn by this. So now let me cut a hunk. I like to cut a hunk out of these fabrics. That way I can sit here and work with it and see, you know, if it's doing what I want it to do. And remember, no straight lines. Okay. All right. Now I got a nice curvy line on the bottom. And I'm going to do a little bit straighter one on the top. The reason is because water finds its own level. And unless you have white cap waves, you don't want it. See how that ends up looking like a big wave? And not many mountain lakes have waves. <laughs> so I'm going to... Okay. So you just, even, even if you cut it thicker or whatever, try not to have it too wavy up top. All right, I'm going to come in here. And this is the reason that I like using school glue, because I can pull it away. And I can pull it away and stick it in there. So let me try. I'm not going to glue this down yet. What I'm going to do is try it out because you don't know at first if you're going to like it or not. And, you know, I'm thinking I might want something grayer. That is very bright. So what I might do is come in here with some of the sky. Oh, where are my gloves? You're right. In fact, I did. It's right here. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Susie. Poor dear, she's got COVID and she's making sure I'm safe. You're a sweetheart, Susie. I'm going to leave this, but watch what I do next. And that's what I was telling you. There are no rules when it comes that when it comes to doing these quilts. There are no rules because it's what you feel like doing. That's what's important. Now, if you don't want people to laugh, you have to make sure that you honor the physics of nature. But you know what? This is your work. You can do whatever you want. But I'm thinking if I cut a little strip and maybe blend, 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 blend. Okay. But I was real proud of myself, Miss Susie. I, when I went to use the, um, uh, yeah, that's going to be better. So now the only problem with using this is I have to cut the clouds a little off here. I don't want the clouds yet. But these gloves, I told you they were inexpensive. They're what they use a lot in cooking or oyster shucking or fish processing. And uh, so I like them because they're not too thick. And I got two pairs for $9.99. Oh, and I've got packages to mail out. I got all my packages ready to mail out, so I need to get them done. All right, let me see, all done. Yeah, that's going to look better. I think I'm going to like that. Although, I do want to listen to what Miss Linda said about putting 
a dark line farther away. So I think I'm going to do a little bit of both, Miss Linda, and then you can tell me if you think I got it right. I love having somebody to bounce ideas off of because it's a lot of pressure to get it right. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Okay. Now, you can do a curvy shoreline, but that can be a little tricky. So, all right, let me, it's a good thing I'm wearing these gloves. Yeah, meat cutting gloves, exactly. That's, these, these are much better. I don't like anything that takes away the feeling in my hands. Um, like I don't garden with gloves on because I want to feel the dirt and feel the plants and all that. And okay, so if I put this up here, let me try to. I'm kind of, you know what? I do like it's got to be thin, but I do like it. All right, and that's that's the thing to do with this. This is one of these quilts that you just take your time, you put on a good book, and you just sit and play. And to me, this is playing. And I'd rather be doing this than housework any day of the week. All right, so now I've got a nice little thin strip. And be careful when you're first cutting it to put it down because you don't want it to get too raggedy. You can keep some fray check handy. And, okay. Hold on just a second. Let me show you. This is another really good thing to keep handy if you have it. This is fray check. And make it thinner at the horizon. Also, the front dark was great because the trees would shade area. Ah, Linda, thank you so much. Boy, I wish she lived close to me because I would have her on here doing this with me. Because, my goodness, have you guys, I hope you have seen when I've shown you her artwork. Very, very talented lady. All right, so I'm going to come in here really quickly. And put a line of glue and then come in carefully, handling it carefully. You don't want to rough the edges up. And then I'm going to put this back like this. Okay. Oh, I love that. Okay. And this is a good time that let's say you wanted a shoreline to undulate a little. You can take this dark and kind of. Bring it down a little bit and make that shoreline really show up. All right. So now another touch of glue down here. All right. Here we go. That is looking so much better. Okay. So now... Let me, oh, and like with the fray check. Okay, when I cut a piece like I did up here with this edge of the shoreline, just take and carefully run a little bit right along the edge. It will dry, it dries clear, and then it won't fray. There you go. So now I'm going to put a little touch of glue here. And... Stick this down under here. Now, I like take, I don't want to get, you can wash these. So if you get glue on the gloves, don't worry. Okay, here we go. Susie, I want you to make sure you email me if you feel up to it and let me know how you're doing because now I'm going to be all worried about Miss Susie. No. Let me see. 
See, like when I'm moving this back and forth, don't run your... Whose birthday is it? Happy birthday to whoever it is. Oh, it's the grandson's birthday. Aw. Now she's had her shot. She can travel. That's wonderful, sweetheart. Okay. I like this. And then I like the little white stripe at the top because water has a way... At a certain point, it looks reflective, like just gray. So, well, this one has a really clear skyline. But thank you, Miss Linda, for helping me to know that And anybody else who's having trouble with your lake, remember, put a darker, make it darker at each edge. And... This is so much better. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so now I have this down here. And then I'm going to lift back up my tree because see with the school glue, you can easily do that. Then I'm going to glue this back down. Let me put this here. Sometimes I find it helps me to look in the camera because I can see it at a different angle. Hold, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. And I've got to cut it back a little bit more. I like having the striped water over here in the peekaboo area. All right, so this is really good. Now, Whoops, I'm going to bring this down just another touch. Okay. I think it looks a lot better. I'm going to come in, though, and I'm going to put a little bit more. I'm going to put a little bit more plant action on this edge. So I'm just going to take this and... All right, just going to kind of see how this looks. And it actually looks better if I tilt it over because I don't want the, I don't want it to be too big. And I can try it around and see, hmm, do I, maybe I want it there. Actually, I like that. When I put it over here, it gives some more of that peekaboo effect. So re remember, peekaboo, that's how you get depth. So I love this right over here. Okay. Whoops. Make sure you don't leave it so long that that little tail wants to catch on everything. Okay. Let me go back in with my peekaboo. And that is the best way I can tell you to make, to give added realism. Whoops. Yeah, I think that's much, much better. Let me bring it up just a touch. All right, so because I know at times when we do bodies of water, they kind of look like they want to float. In fact, you know, that's why we put foundation plants at, on a house, around a house, because you don't want the house to look like it's floating. So foundation plants anchor the house and um, edging helps anchor now, I'm going to come in here with a slightly different color. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take, I'm, I'm not sure, I think it might work, but I'm going to make this look like some little tall grasses by the edge of the lake. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of folding it up, then cutting, cutting it out, and now, 
I'm going to do this side. It just feels softer and looser. So then what I'm going to do is do... Do a funny edge. Something like maybe... Something less tree-like. More like tall grasses. I'm not sure. I don't want it to look too beachy because it's not the beach. But let's see what I can do. Now, you don't want them all the same height, so you kind of can come and give it a trim. And maybe this won't work, but let's, let's just see. I think it needs to be a little more cut. And you know what? I think it... Let me hold on a second. I'm not sure I'm going to like that. I think I would like it here. But it just looks too light all of a sudden. So, and, and if you take and make all those little cuts and then put, um, and just kind of random cut, 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 cut like this, or fold it back up and cut, cut, cut. Just make cuts. Make sure you don't cut your fingers. I know I don't have my glove on. Then come along here and pull. And that will pull some of the little pieces that you've cut. It'll go ahead and pull it out so that you've got the little uneven. So now what I'm going to do is make this not very tall. Okay, and I'm going to tuck this here. I think, yeah, I like that much better there. Okay, so now I'll come in with some glue. And put this here. Oh, I love that. I love, I love the sense of depth. And remember, this is your world, and you get to, to say what's going to be in it. All right, I need another short piece right here. It ends oddly. And so now I'm going to fold this again and put on my glove this time just to make sure. Oops. Okay. All right, now make a bunch of cuts, 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 cuts. You, you're just cutting. You're not worried where, what you're cutting. And then, because this is going to make it, try to make it look like some tall prairie grasses or mountain grasses. Then I come and I lift up this bright front meadow, and I'm going to... Stick this in there. I don't need it quite as tall. Okay. Okay. I like that. That gives, do you see already now the little more interest? So once you've got your colors blocked, Take, take time this week and go in and do a little more fill-in. Don't overdo it. Editing's important. But try to add a little bit more realism. I want to do one more thing to this lake, and then I think I'm going to kind of let this, I'll hold it up for you to see, but I'm going to kind of let this sit and have you enjoy this. All right, you know, I... I'm going to I'm going to do something. Remember I talked to you about that creek. It wasn't looking like what I wanted it to look like. So I think I need to come in here. Yeah, I think that's going to be better. So let me lift. Oh, there. I hadn't glued it down very good. So I'm going to come in here and put just a little glue, and I'm going to come in here. 
Um, one thing the teacher Jane Hayworth taught me in the class I took is it, it can help if you have tweezers so that you can easily put the little scraps of fabric just where you want them. So let me see. I, ha I haven't decided if I want to keep it light or go a little darker. So I'm not going to glue that in yet. Now let me come get something else. Let's see. I think this medium might be good. So what I'm going to do is move all these out. I don't save scraps that little unless I want to use them for confetti, but I will save a scrap that size. Okay. Let me do another little, let me grab a rectangle out of this. Okay. And I'm going to want this to kind of come into here. So, let me see. I like using an area that has a lot of contrast. So, I'm going to come in here. This, I want it to look shrub or small tree-like. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is put it there and see what I think. Now, do you see, ladies, already I have anchored this lake that want that used to want to float away. Okay, do you see how by doing this, I'm going to also, another thing, I'm going to put another dark stripe over here. Boy, I love that Miss Linda taught me this. Thank you, Miss Linda. But over here, I'm going to end up gluing this down. Right there. Oh, that really does ground it. See how I added that in? Let me, I'll bring you in a little closer. Do you see that adding this? And I might try to kind of do a little bit of that over here, too. And then, okay, if I take this away, that's okay. But the, the lake is, is floating just a wee bit. So I think I might come in. I'll decide where along here I want this. Maybe I just barely want it maybe I want it down like that okay all right so can you tell though now and over here it might be good for me to do a little bit more in undulating or like maybe come around this corner with a little dark to kind of make it look like the shoreline because the shoreline kind of will do this and, um, but I'm definitely going to put the dark blue over here. And it really, and probably on this, this side right here, or maybe this side of the water to kind of outline it, give it some shadow. And here, before I glue this down, I'm going to make the bottom wavy. Remember, no straight lines. But I've got to decide. I'm not ready to put it down because I'm not sure where I want it. Whether I want it higher up like that or down like this. So I will work on that. But I think you can see now that by doing, by working on this lake today, I have grounded it. And it's not so obtrusive. Exactly. That's what I'm going to just take your time walking away from something and coming back can make all the difference in the world. And I think I'm still going to play around with this a little bit. Maybe I can find a good stone color and kind of put a cup boulder or two along here. 
but um, but I, I'm liking it better. It's not perfect yet, but I'm liking it much better. So I will keep working on it. I might need another area. I'm going to look, find some more photos of the lakes and kind of get a good idea for here. All right. But it's, it's getting there. It's getting there. But, um, and, you know, by taking that class that I took the other day, it, it helps me understand the benefit of contrast because having this dark fabric contrast here really makes it pop. Thank you, Linda, for this dark shoreline over there. Makes it pop. So I think that I definitely need to do that for this part because right now it's just kind of hanging from outer space. So be working this week on adding a couple more layers. Give it a little more depth. Um, and don't worry too much because when we, we are going to add depth and layers when we do our thread painting and we may do a little fabric painting. Oh, don't want to see me that close. So, okay. I hope. Oh, pictures real quick. Okay. Hold on guys. Pictures, pictures, pictures. So, whoops. All right. Let's see. Cause I've got some great pictures for you. All right. Come on. Take off my glove. Maybe it'll recognize my finger. Hold on. Okay. Let me turn off this light over here. All right. Here we go. Okay. Let's look at what we've got. If I've forgotten, I'm not going to open all the pictures, just the ones that have really good things for um, art quilting. Here is Miss B. Hepworth from England. This is her beautiful, beautiful picture. I love this, and I love how she gave, whoops, got glue stuck in my finger, but she, how she gave the glow. That is amazing. But thank you, Miss B. All right, now I want to go Miss Betty. Miss Betty sent, of course, you know, she did the nice lion collage. And that really helped me. And then here she's working on her landscape. And she wants to be able to work a little more on kind of smoothing it out. I would say here, try to work another ground color so that this isn't just bottoming out here. So that you've got something a little bit more in front of it. But this, I love how she has cut this so it makes it look undulating and a little more hilly and natural. Like, you know, whatever's growing there is not all the same size. She did a great job of anchoring her lake. She's got some Angelina fibers in here. Love, love, love it. So she might want to come back a little bit more and doing a little more uh, planting around the edge of it. But I think she's really got something going here. I really do. All right. Very, very, very good, Miss Betty. And here is a wolf that animal collage she was working on. And I love the leaves here in front. They're beautiful. It gives a nice depth to it. So way to go. Good work on the eyes, darling. I love it. All right. Now let's see who else. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. Oh, there was something I wanted to show you. Oh, and since this is an art quilt, I thought you might like to see it. But see what happened at first when I just used yellow and purple? And so I took a picture on my phone. We did that with the teacher because it really helped her to see it. So when I ad started adding bridge fabrics, fabrics that bridge between yellow and purple, it started looking so much better. Then here in the center of the forehead, I added a mandala. 
And I saw she had done, put a flower in some, because the cows have a fur whorl, W-H-O-R-L. And somebody had put a flower and I thought, oh, so I put the mandala there. And I think it gives them a little bit of an Indian look. Okay. Let me see. Whoops. I didn't mean to show all this. So let me pull back a second. Um, I was looking to see if there was something else I needed. I think that's pretty good for now. All right. So I'll come out of mine. And Miss Dolores, let's see. Yes, I thought she had something in here. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? I love her little Carolina wren on the branch. And talk about confetti. This background looks all like confetti. That is gorgeous. Way to go. Way to go. And the leaves look so real. So thank you, Miss Dolores, for sending that. Right now, we're just showing pictures of your art quilts. Okay. Now, this lady, would y'all help me in trying to tell Miss Jody that she needs to enter into, um, into some quilt shows? Uh, she has a bunch of photos, so I might move through them a little bit quickly. But she decided Frankie needed a bride. Look at the work on that. She's so very talented. I'm always in awe of Miss Jody. Look at that. Each time, each step adds more and makes that Bride of Frankenstein come to life. Isn't that amazing? I love it. I love it. So thank you, thank you, Miss Jody. So talented. Goodness gracious. All right. Then Linda McCollum, uh, thank goodness we have some of her beautiful work to show. Look at that. And what I love most about this is she managed to find fabric that makes it look like that water is reflecting everything around it. Beautiful. Just beautiful. It looks like a mirror here along here. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us. And then, of course, I love this seascape. It is gorgeous. And her painting of roses, just beautiful. Watercolor painting is hard stuff. I'm, at least it is to me. And I had an artist one time tell me, well, you know, it takes about 500 before you can say you're good at it. It's like, whoa. Okay, now let me see. This is, yes, here we go. And I think this is Miss Susie, Miss Susie Blakes. And she's working on two of them. And she was trying to get her lake to set in. And I had the same problem, Miss Susie. So I'm hoping that what we did tonight helped you. But see, if you look at the river, do you see how there's always something growing on the banks? And that really anchors it. And this even kind of goes up, so it's not flat. But by the same token, you know the water is level. But the shoreline goes up and around, and so do the plants. So just remember that plants will anchor it. So, okay, I think that's it for our photos tonight. But thank you so much. And uh, time for me to get upstairs. I know Mark is cooking dinner. Last night, ooh, I, let me hold on. I don't know what I've done with this. Hold on a second. Oh, good. You can't see it. So I'm just going to ignore it. Um, last night, yeah, chicken liver. It was good. And asparagus. It was so good. So, uh-oh, I don't see. I might have lost you on this one. So I'm going to say goodbye and, oh, okay, I think I lost you. Take care. See you next week. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye, guys. Oh.
shoot, shoot, shoot.